This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? The mind is a terrible thing to waste. There are drugs that we are wasting our brain power on. Drugs that don't leave us high or that won't cause us to fail a drug test, but are harmful just the same. Worry is a drug. Worry is defined as being teased, troubled, harassed, or vexed. Worrying takes place in the minds of those who have the burden of life's cares on their shoulders and not the Lord's. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Let's dissect this verse of scripture. Be careful for nothing? In other words, do not worry. Do not be worried. Don't allow your bills to tease you into anxious thoughts. Don't allow your poor health to vex you. Do not be harassed by your relationship status. Don't be troubled by your children misbehaving. Be careful for nothing. In the meetings of Narcotics Anonymous, there is a saying, don't use. If you don't use drugs, you cannot experience the power of its ability to control your life, period. No matter how powerful a particular substance may be, it is powerless against you unless you consume it. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Worrying is a drug. Do not use it. As powerful as an emotion it is, worrying cannot overpower you if you deny the urge to worry. Don't use. The addict will come up with all sorts of excuses as to why he or she should use. My mama died. It calms my nerves. Nobody listens to me. It helps my creative juices to flow. My wife argues with me. These excuses are what I call enablers. These excuses make drug use a possibility. These excuses help the addict to turn the desire into a reality. People who stress, worry, fret, people who are anxious, nervous, and full of fear also utilize enablers. The excuses that we come up with can be truly exotic and unreasonable. I worry because something just has to change. Or I'm stressed because I'm late paying a bill. I'm nervous because I can't figure out what I want to do with my life. I'm fearful because I'm lonely. These are excuses that enable us to think negatively. We depend on these enablers because these enablers excuse our poor thinking. We need these enablers just as the drug addict needs his or her excuses to enable their drug use. Yet, we look down on the addict when we ourselves are caught up in the same cycle. There is no appropriate excuse for allowing negative thoughts to seize us. The truth of the matter is that we have fed into the lie that our emotions have offered us. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Not fearful? Then what emotion enables you the most? You say, I am not fearful. That's not my issue then what emotion enables you the most? Is it doubt, passion, rage, anger, lust, pride, selfishness? Replace the word fear in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 and plug in whatever emotion that cripples and enables you to think negatively. What every emotion that might be, God didn't give it to you. Life 
passed it down to you. The DNA that your parents passed down to you filled you with these enabling emotions that drive you into poor decision making. Eve, when she listened to a sermon preached by a talking snake, made the way possible for foreign emotions to be passed down to every generation since. She looked at the forbidden tree and allowed her eyes to linger. This enabled the spirit of curiosity. She witnessed that this snake was talking and she concluded that it must be because he ate the fruit. This paved the way for the emotion of excitement. She allowed the enabler of doubt to rush in when she entertained the following words, ye shall not surely die. And from that day until this, foreign emotions that God did not give you have been enabling your addictions. Let's go back to 2 Timothy 1.7. We learned before that the enabler of fear, doubt, passion, rage, anger, lust, pride, selfishness, and jealousy aren't spirits that God gave us. We learn in 2 Timothy 1 through 7 that there are enablers that God has passed down. Enablers such as power, love, and a sound mind. Power is a positive enabler. Power is force. Power is described as miraculous and miraculous is defined as acquiring through divine or supernatural intervention. Something highly improbable, extraordinary, and bringing with it very welcoming consequences. In other words, God has given us access to miraculous power, power that is linked to his supernatural existence, a force that can produce improbable, extraordinary results. And we don't use it because we are high on fear, jealousy, lust, greed, pride, doubt, and all the other enablers we are used to. Next, we have the enabler of love. Love is defined as affection, and affection is described as a gentle feeling of fondness or liking. Benevolent, meaning the quality of being well, meaning, and kind. Charity, which is kindness and tolerance in judging others. Love of humankind. So love is a protector and shield. It protects me from the enabler of hate. When I activate the power or the force of love, it changes everything. I'm naturally selfish. I cannot break this spirit on my own. And because of selfishness, I get caught up with so many other negative enablers. Because I'm always thinking about me, I get caught up in jealousy. If everything is about me, then I'm comparing my blessings with the blessings of others. The problem with this is that I enable the spirit of dissatisfaction and when I'm dissatisfied with my life, I become filled with jealousy as I witness another's. Doubt is an enabler that leads me into the slums of negativity. If I doubt in the supernatural power that God has given me and settle my mind into doubting, then it's easy to play the blame game and credit circumstances and people as to the source of my misery. I mean, if only my wife would do this. Or if my parents weren't broke, I would be better established. Or if they weren't so controlling, I would be able to do X, Y, Z. The thing about doubt is that it finds its roots in the belief of the idea that I am not that important to God. Therefore, it's up to me to get things done. Doubters are critical. They don't believe in anything or anyone. This type of critical thinking leads to isolation and isolation leads to cruel judgment. This is an unhealthy atmosphere and leads 
to damage that's just as harmful to the individual as drugs are to the addict. There's another enabler that God passed down to man, and it is the power of a sound mind. A sound mind is discipline. But what does that look like? A disciplined mind has self-control. So when the enabler of lust wants you to take a hit, you remember that the mind is a terrible thing to waste, and therefore, we won't use. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? A disciplined mind will identify the drug of doubt. The sound mind will remember just how potent doubt was the last time you took a hit of it and will avoid it at all costs. A mind that is governed by self-control won't allow the enabler of pride to intoxicate his thinking. He knows well just how strong of a drug he will be on if he purchases a sack of pride from the dealer. Pride fries the brain cells and has you thinking that you're Superman. Many people have overdosed on pride. They thought that they had pure pride that wasn't cut with other chemicals. Just to find out later that their sack of pride was mixed with arrogance, self-righteousness, greed, and selfishness. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. Don't use! This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Let's combine the three enablers that God provided. Power, love, and a sound mind. Miraculous power that produces improbable, extraordinary results is my new enabler. It's my new high. This power elevates me above negativity that would intoxicate my thinking. Love is the second enabler. Love is affection, kindness, and genuine feelings of fondness. The third enabler is a sound mind, a disciplined mind that is governed by self-control. Remember, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. Don't use. Train the mind. The brain is a muscle. Train it. Next time the enabling thoughts of negative thinking attempt to disturb you, remember the three enablers God gave you. These must become your default. The emotions you turn to during all of life's ups and downs. Stop being a lazy thinker. It is your job to manage your thoughts. If the drug dealer's job is to promote his drugs, your job is to say no. Take charge and conduct a mental inventory. What can be allowed a space in your thoughts and what needs to be denied access? Work the steps. When your thoughts drift, activate the power of God in the area of choice. Choose to say no to the enabling thoughts that would intoxicate you. It's possible to do this no matter how impossible you suppose this to be because you are relying on God's supernatural power to do it. Work the steps. Love your way through feelings of hatred, jealousy, and envy. Love your wife, husband, boyfriend, or girlfriend, even when their behavior isn't lovable. Your recovery is important to you, right? Don't use. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. Work the steps. Utilize the power of a sound mind. Use the force of self-control and tell your thoughts, no, we won't be negative. A sound mind is sensitive to all the stimulating enablers seeking to get you high. Say no, be aware, not once or twice, but daily and consistently throughout your day. Like Captain Planet used to say, The power is yours!
Thank you.